Hey, this is Doug White. We're at AnyCon. Uh, talking to people about cybersecurity. There's tons of people here. We have all kinds of stuff. People have been playing hacky, hacker movie trivia. I got taken down by the guy who could not miss a question. I don't care what I ask him, in fact. It was a little, yeah, I mean, uh, some of our production crew have been like, you know, suffering all sorts of torments as a result of gambling on hacker movie trivia, which we warned them not to do. But people that are doing shots of potato vodka at, you know, two in the afternoon, often end up with you know unfortunate tattoos and strange diseases that they can't explain uh, but that's neither here nor there i'm here with john from elite Cybersecurity, who who is one you are you are you a sponsor of the the conference oh, and we, uh, we're throwing it yeah you're throwing it so that was that was right so that's really awesome it looks like from what i've seen so far that that it's been a big success uh much better than we thought for the first year or so much better than I thought. It was like a new one. I was like, well, you know, this could be one of those things where we all show up and there's like three or four people standing around of like, you know, trash barrel with a fire in it, you know, in the lobby. And instead it's like, there's like all these people and we, we've had lots and lots of traffic out here. And there's, a, a, there was like lots of sessions and people were like, well, there's so many sessions. I can't pick the ones I want. And well, I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to so it, it seems like it's been quite a success and, uh, and, and especially for the first day. So I think it's, it's going to keep going. So we're going to talk a little bit about teaching people pen testing. So it's always about me, but um, way back when, so this was in like 1998, I taught a class that was called Hacking 101 in Colorado and got in a bunch of trouble uh, because that wasn't very well received by the, by the state officials who, who heard about it because there was a news article and all this roll that forward a long time to today so uh, wow that's that's actually a long time it's almost 20 years um to come forward to today you're very interested in this piece of education and what do you what do you think we should be teaching people in pen testing uh i think we should be teaching people uh especially the ethics first and before you get to the technical stuff but then i think we should give you know undergraduate students from that age onward from that education level the opportunity to break you know, to explore the same way that they're, you know, these criminals are doing at the same age all over the world without the training. But if we can get these people who are interested in this and give them access to the, the classes they want and not classes they have to take, you know, we are the only ones that benefit. Everyone in the world, you know, society or the organizations or the schools, we are the ones that benefit. Okay, I mean, I, I agree with that. Do you think you can teach people ethics, though? So I, I always, I've always gone back and forth in that because I know there's ethics classes, you know, these kind of things. But I, I've always had a bit of sort of question about do you really think you can teach, you know, people ethics? Um, I mean, you can explain to someone, you know, the line they can or can't cross. Uh, but more importantly, I think you can make enough deterrence, um, you know, like the CFAA or uh, expulsion from the school if they do break this honor system. Um, but I think the, the bigger thing is what is actually crossing the line. You know, there are a lot of things today that are automatic, that are point and click. And I think, uh, especially in my classes, in my experience, you know, we're putting people in front of these tools without understanding what's going on in the background and they wouldn't know if they were crossing a line. And I think yeah, that's I, what I mean by I, that. Okay, I, I agree with that very much. I mean, I, mean, I, I, I think that too. I, I think that, that one, there are gonna be people who are always break the rules. I mean, that's Kohlbergian pre-conventionalism. I've, I've talked about it for years. And they're gonna break the rules as long as there's not deterrence that are gonna catch them. So, I mean, if you convince them they're gonna go to jail or they're gonna be punished, they yep. won't do stuff. Uh, and I also agree that a lot of people are are not going to do these things if they know they're wrong because I've had a lot of students and I've, I've taught pen testing I've done pen testing and and we all I mean I've almost never met anybody in this field that wasn't a little bit mischievous I mean it's kind of a part of the the mindset that goes into doing pen testing because your whole world is about going around that problem or yep. figuring a way to break through the lock or whatever so you have to have a little bit of that mentality of that criminal mentality just to do the job but you also a lot of times I think people kind of get carried away they don't really know where to stop or what's what's good so how do, how do you teach that how do you what, what do you do I think you explain to them what they are breaking it for and not just because they want to or for the lulls or you know it's it's because you are trying to make it better you are trying to make it harden you're trying to harden it you're trying to make it you know more secure 
uh, you're trying to close these holes so that the bad guys who do sell your information, who do do bad things with it, they don't get that information. And I think if we could make it clear to students, you know, what it means, what you're actually doing, they would feel much more uh, like they are achieving something or like they are doing something important if they have that impression that what it is actually for. I, I like what you said about classes that you need rather than classes that you're forced to take. Yep. And I know that that's always been one of my kind of ideological approaches was, was that I, I like to look at the industry and say, what do you need to learn to get the job that you yep. want? And, and I very much believe that about pen testing because pen testing is a hard thing to teach. Yeah. Because there's this broad skill set that, that, that really, you know, when I started doing it, it was because I had worked on so many platforms. So I'd been around forever. I'd been doing this stuff since the 70s. So I'd seen a lot of things. And that meant that I had a very broad skill set. But it's hard to start building that skill set through school, you know, because it's tough to say, well, let's go ahead and learn RPG just for fun. You know, right. it's like, uh, you're like, why not? So we've always tried to pull that down. So what, what do you think? is the class if you're teaching pen testing what tool would you teach i mean how, how would um, you do it i mean so i had a few uh a few ideas i think there should be ctfs um that are red versus blue so offensive security students versus defensive security students i think that's something that uh we're completely missing and lacking you know um i just wrote a uh worked on a grant in my old school for developing a ctf that they would integrate into their curriculum and I think, you know, it didn't have a, a red versus blue side. It doesn't have, both sides benefit if you have defensive students battling the offensive students. Yeah. Another thing, <coughs> bug bounty programs. This is everywhere, <laughs> every organization, but no school, it doesn't make sense. I mean, hmm. these students can do it for scholarships, for schools, you know, recognition for their resume, for transfer. So, so you're saying that like, like have the class focus on doing a bug bounty or something like that, or are you saying to run a bug bounty? Uh, to have the class focus on, on the so school. So like say, okay, Google's offering a bug bounty on this thing, right. so have the school try to make money by going or, after it. Or the school's having a bug bounty. For you heard students. it here first, go do it. I mean, I, I think that's an awesome idea. That, that's a, I had not thought of that, and I think that's a really good idea. So look, pen testing people, so that's a good way to teach your class, and they can make money. You and could, benefit. You, well, yeah, I mean, I mean, because one thing I, I think would be cool is if you can make enough money to come to these kind of conferences and things like that, that's awesome. So if you can go out and run a bug bounty, make 5000 bucks for your, like, uh, your whatever club you have, your Cyber Patriot or whatever kind of club, why not? And that's a great way to learn. And there's not really a downside to it because the worst case is you don't find anything and you still tried really hard. And that's, that's about 90% of what all this is. Right, right. I mean, ideally, if you're a, good, if you're a pen tester, if they're good, you're going to fail. Right. I mean, that's that's the first. There's nothing there. There's usually right. something there. But 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 I mean, you know, literally, if, if it was all locked down, you, you should come away going. And the school benefits. Absolutely. I think that's a great. Yeah, I think that's a very good idea to do. What tool what tools would you teach in pen testing, though? If you run the class, I mean, besides all these nice things, what, what would you teach? Um, I mean, it's hard. I mean, what kind of pen tests are you talking about? Because I do external ones. I do physical. You know, I do internal. I do web ones. Um, I really think that the manual side of it, the manual maybe, you know, using Netcat instead of a, a port knocker, I think that's something that students can benefit from uh, because they understand what's going on more. Okay. Um, but... Yeah, yeah, it's it's a hard it's a hard thing to say, you know. Not not every tool is a language. So so what language would you tell? Languages? Yeah, which uh, one would, should you learn? I think uh, starting with some one, you know, a very low level one like HTML would be a great start. And by the end, it should, they should be pretty uh, proficient in, in Python and um, Python. Perl. Write that down, Python. Yeah. I, I've been I've been like preaching Python forever and ever because it's like something I wish you know more people knew and there's always a big demand for it and it's been, it's just really useful scripting language and it's it's not a it's not so bad the syntax no it's it's, it's not, not. So Python bad. is easy I mean, if you know like Java or if you've been doing Java with appies you you can do Python very quickly right yeah I, I yeah <laughs> okay uh, so how about a fun question then we'll okay. wrap this up. How about a fun question? Um, so, uh, Star Wars or Star Trek? Star Wars. Star Wars, okay. I can't ever get a Star Trek person. Okay, so my question then is, did Han shoot first? Did Han Solo shoot first? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> He's not sure. See, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in the, like, he should have shot sooner. 
camp of like, you know, he, he didn't wait, he, he waited too long. He should have shot the guy right away. So that was kind of my objective, but that's just one. I like to put a little fun question out there at the end. So, uh, well, I want to thank you for coming down and talking with us and, and having this great conference uh, here in Albany. So uh, we appreciate it and we'll see you around tomorrow, I'm sure. All right, well, thanks. All right, thanks a lot.